have to bear with me because I'm trying to work through a number of thoughts. But at, at, as I said last night, um, we're at a time of crisis and opportunity. Um, we have uh, the official space program is very confused. Uh, there's new potentials uh, emerging in terms of the new space industry showing a lot of uh, potential, although <laughs> some of its leaders are very confused. Um, but, and we have a world situation which is extremely uh, turbulent. Um, the, we have a certain vision of the human future. It's an unlimited future, okay? It's a future in which um, we see humanity as living not at the end of history, but at the beginning of history, truly at the beginning of history, okay? Um, the, 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 um, that we will be admired by future generations, not because of the, uh, magnificence of our civilization, but because we are able to rise above our barbarism. Okay. That, that is why. Okay, just as, you know, you can look at the paintings in the cave in France left by Cro-Magnon people 40,000 years ago and see these were humans, these were, were capable of art. And you, 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 you can look at the Gothic cathedrals and say, even though you know of all the barbaric aspects of medieval culture, that these people had high ideals, that they were able to rise above the limitations of their time. Okay. You know, and the, 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 you know, this time will be remembered by the future as a barbaric time but also hopefully look back in wonder, okay, that we were able to rise above it and lift humanity out of it, okay. Um, the, um, now, the, the, the issue is fundamentally this, okay. Are human beings consumers of resources or are we creators? What is the nature of man? Okay. Um, and it, it affects the entire view of what is necessity and what is practical. Okay. Um, an opponent of our view, Adolf Hitler, once said, encapsulating the other position very well, said the laws of existence require unlimited killing so that the better may live. Okay, that's a quote. And actually, uh, some people may be interested. It's what he said when he signed the order for the extermination of the city of Leningrad, okay, which they were not successful in doing, but which they wanted to do. Um, the, the, and, but this view is wrong, okay? It's not just morally wrong, it's wrong from a practical point of view, okay? Um, because, in fact, the human race is not, as the anti-humans would claim, uh, a, a group of nations, tribes, whatever you would call us, in a war for existence over limited resources, okay? That is their view, which necessarily entails war, okay? It defines all other nations, uh, and actually even all other individuals, but 
uh, humans band together so that they can win these fights. But so all other nations as enemies of every other nation. Okay. So war is implicit in it. Okay. And this point of view was responsible ultimately for um, all of the major catastrophes, human caused catastrophes in the 20th century, including the two world wars, the Holocaust, the Holodomor, and so forth. Uh, and it's threatening human existence now. Okay. Now it's wrong because, in fact, the human race is not a bunch of tribes in a struggle for existence over limited resources. We are a diverse families of people, a very disorderly family to be sure at this point, uh, but nevertheless, a family engaged in a joint project to expand the horizons of humanity, okay? The, 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 you know, uh, the current, leader of China and his close friends think that the United States is their enemy. The West is their enemy. But in fact, the reason why China has developed incredibly exponentially two orders of magnitude increase in the standard of living over the past 30 years, a hundredfold, okay, um, is because of inventions made in the West, including things ranging from that this okay electricity railroads automobiles aeroplanes computers internets all this okay and yet okay it is a fact that the west itself achieved its renaissance because of inventions like paper and printing that were made in china okay Inventions made anywhere ultimately become used anywhere. So the creative potential of all nations benefits all nations, okay? This is a very important difference between human social evolution and biological evolution. Human social evolution is not, not Darwinian. We certainly evolve, but not by superior nations exterminating inferior nations, okay? There's a fundamental reason why that is true. It's because humans can inherit acquired characteristics, okay? And not only from their parents, but from people to whom they are unrelated, acquired characteristics being things like inventions, okay? That's an adaptation that can be arrived at somewhere and then be utilized not only by that person's children, but, and even people they know, but by people far away. Um, so we're all in it together, but that is not seen. Okay. Now, um, the conversation at my table, I was sitting next to the gentleman from Blue Origin last night and he referred tangentially to it actually in his remarks. Okay. Because he was a believer that the population explosion threatens humanity that when he was born, there were 4 billion people and now there's eight and that's a problem. When I was born, there was two. And the and if, if we had made sure there couldn't be four, maybe he wouldn't exist. Now, the, the, the um, and, and you see, he's wrong, okay? We're not threatened by there being too many people. We're threatened by people who think there are too many people, okay? Right? Now, that's, that's who threatens you. The, 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 but we're threatened by the I, and I'm not here arguing for population growth. That's not my point. Okay. My point is that the, the point of view that additional people are a minus to you, that point of view is a threat. Okay. It's a threat and not just to them, but to you and to everybody else. Okay. The point of view that there are other nations is a minus to you is a threat. It is the primary threat facing humanity today. It is the primary threat. Now, I, I will tell you, uh, well, though I, I do not believe in, in some of the alarmist projections of climate activists, I, I believe global warming is real. I think it's an issue. I think we're going to have to deal with it. Okay. But it doesn't threaten to kill you this year or next year. Okay. Or 20 years from now. It threatens to create climate changes that could be 
uh, harmful in some places and probably beneficial in others because part of the world's too cold. But, the, the, but sure, it's got to be dealt with. But that's not the thing. The, the, the main threat to humanity today is that it will kill itself over the belief that other nations are enemies. And, and you see, and if you believe that other nations are fundamentally enemies and that to whom you're going to have to fight it out sooner or later, then the only question is sooner or later. And by definition, it will be better for one side or the other to do it sooner. Okay, always going to be. Okay, so, and you know, 1912, General Friedrich von Berthardt, chief intellectual general, German general staff said, look, here's Eurasia. Either we Germans are going to get it or the Russians are going to get it. We're going to have to fight it out with them sooner or later. Okay, sooner or later, which make it sooner because they haven't industrialized yet. We can take them down now. Okay, uh, Japan and China, 1930s, who's going to get Asia? Japanese said, let's take them down now while they're weak. Um, so forth. And here you have this now. Um, you know, um, Putin has defined the West as an adversarial interest. Okay. Um, and actually, from his point of view, given Russia's declining population and so forth, um, he, he's not so strong, sure he wants to wait. Uh, he wants to position himself. It's completely adverse to Russia's actual interests. Russia's actual interests are to join in the prosperity of the Western world. Uh, you know, Poland and other Eastern European countries that have, have tripled or quadrupled their standards of living since the fall of the Soviet bloc. Um, but anyway, there is that. Now, I actually believe that this particular thing we're seeing now will be rebuffed and contained. Okay, I, I think that this one, we're going to get through this one. Uh, but the next one uh, is going to be more serious. Uh, I happen to know that there are people in the American national security establishment who believe that war with China is inevitable. Why? Because there's 1.4 billion of them. That's 10 times as many as there are Russians. And if they all start driving cars and stuff like that, there won't be enough oil in the world. And you can bet your bottom dollar that they have counterparts in Beijing who look at this problem from the opposite side of the chessboard and think comparable thoughts. It's not enough for both of us. There's only so much to go around. Uh, now, but that's not true. Okay, it's not true that there's only so much to go around. Now, we've got some time with that one. Those people are more patient than Putin. Uh, and in fact, they've got good reasons to wait because they're doing pretty good playing the game under peacetime conditions, um, by and large. Um, but one way or another, if that point of view prevails, that, that there will be war. Okay. Now, we have to make sure that point of view does not prevail. That's what this is. This is a battle of ideas. We are engaged in a battle of ideas. The, the, getting humans to Mars, yes, it's for the science. Yes, it's for the challenge. Okay, yes, it will do wonders for the younger generation in terms of being part of a society that has that kind of positive view of what it can accomplish and that they should develop their minds so they can be part of it, so they can be leading it. Okay, and that's what we saw with this education initiative, and we want to bring that home. But th there's something else here. It's to prove a point. It's to win this battle, this war of ideas. Because you see, if, 
if you can take, see, as I said, there's no such thing as a natural resource. There's only natural raw materials. Mars is a barren place right now. Um, but if human ingenuity is brought to it, it can be uh, the home of many new thriving, glorious cultures and nations, okay? Now, that part of this mission is a little beyond our time. But if we can bring it into view, Okay, if we can succeed in getting humans to Mars, so then it, that future, okay, we won't be in it, but we'll see it. Okay, people will see it. It will be understood that, 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 that there's a different kind of future, that there's a future of unlimited resources, and there's room enough in the universe for lots of flags, lots of flags our flag, Chinese flag, Russian flag, okay? The, there's universe in there. And not only that, but by in, using our talents, we can create planets. I mean, Mars is there as a planet, but it's not there as a living planet, not now. I mean, yeah, there's probably bacteria in the groundwater on Mars and they, um, there's a lot of science to be learned by studying them. And, you know, if that's how we get Queen Isabella to provide the jewels for the ship, uh, that's great. Um, the, 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 but there's more in the new world than a spice round to India. Okay, much more. There's a new world in the new world. Okay. Um, and the... Um, the, the, you know, that's the thing that is to, 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 if we can get people to Mars, we will show there's no point killing each other over provinces when by working together, we can open planets. And if okay, now we our society, we actually do have people in Russia and China and so forth, but mostly we operate in the West. Okay, we are really a phenomenon of Western culture, but Western culture is heard, it's watched. Okay, you know, I don't know what it is now, but I was in Russia not too long ago, and you could go into the bookstore and buy Harry Potter. No, and you could watch The Simpsons on television. Okay, um, the, the, our Western ideas do get around the world. And if people here have that kind of view of the future, people there will pick it up. And then if their leaders still wanna go on these insane adventures, they will say, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Why are you doing this? You know, this past weekend, she, the dictator of China, purged some of his leading uh, rivals, or not even really rivals, just people who weren't his stooges within the Communist Party, okay? The, the guy who was the previous prime minister of China was dragged out of the Communist Party plenary meeting, okay? That makes him temporarily stronger, but it, it's a, really a demonstration of weakness, okay? That shows that he feels he cannot even trust other Communist Party leaders to back him in things that he wishes to do. That's what it shows. Um, and so, you know, there's plenty of people of goodwill in these countries. Um, and what we have to do is promote a vision of the human future that makes the, the, those who believe war is necessary, that that view appears absurd. Okay, we gotta make it absurd. We gotta make anti-humanism absurd. So anyway, 
We've got these projects that will spread the vision, okay? The education project, the, the Mars stations, additional ones in Mongolia. We're gonna have, uh, we're looking to do a mission at the Flashline Mars Arctic Research Station next summer, which should also get a lot of press. There's the rover competitions, but ultimately you're the messengers. Spread the word in any way you can. That's our goal. We're going to make war absurd. We're going to make it understood that humanity can have, indeed, an infinite future. And that we are not living at the end of history. We're living at the beginning of history. We're present at the creation. And people who join in this vision have an opportunity to be among the creators. Thank you.